Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Our job is to consecrate ourselves to God. And if we do that day in and day out, God is going to show up and show up. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Win the day. Amen. Win the day. Good morning, Crossroads Church. Morning. It's good to see you guys, and welcome to all those online. Josh Anderson, just want to say, salute you, brother. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, um, my name is Marcus. I'm the lead pastor here, and I've been gone for three weeks, but I just wanted to tell you guys, for those of y'all who knew why I was away, thank you for praying. Thank you for encouraging notes. Thank you for bringing all that food to the house. Uh, we appreciate that so, so very much. We have a great, fantastic body, body here of believers, amen? amen, who takes care of each other, amen? I just love that about you guys. Well, we are in a series entitled Win uh, the Day, and this is our fourth week in this series. Uh, next week, just want to make a note real quick to you that um, I'm going to give like a, past, a pastor's address for the year. I've got some things in my heart concerning this particular year, so I really want to encourage you either to go online or come to the church and uh, listen to next week's message concerning 2021. Are you guys ready for a great 2021? Yes. It's been good so far, amen? amen. It's just going to get better and better. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today we have to win the day. The title of this morning's message is A Daily Path. Say daily path with me. Daily it's the daily path. How many of you guys know that every single one of you are on a daily path? In other words, there are certain habits that you are doing every single day. There's a certain direction that you're going to right now. And that direction that you're going on right now will lead you to a certain destination. If I wanted to go to Houston, I do not get on 10 and go west. Is that west? I, don't, I, I, can, I can go on that direction and I can pray, I can fast, I can call my brothers and let's pray a prayer of agreement and I'll never get to Houston if I'm going west on 10. Why? Because it's, I have good intentions. I'm gonna get to Houston. Why? Because my wife's over there and she's calling for me. But if I go that way, my direction going that way will never take me to this destination. The direction you're on, uh, that's, you know, that's pretty big, right? It's like, oh yeah. So every single person is on a direction. You're going a certain way. You can pray and you can fast and you can have great intentions, but the direction that you're on financially, the direction that you're on relationally, the direction that you're on spiritually will get you to the destination according, that's according to you, the direction that you're on right now, according to your daily path. Isn't that true? And so when we're talking about win the day, we're talking about a lot of people have a hard time um, figuring out, you know, they want to succeed. They have certain dreams. They have certain promises that God's given to them, but they don't know where to start. It seems so far ahead. And sometimes they look at their past and based upon their past decisions or their past um, failures or past things that went on in life, they, they're scared to start to, to pursue that because if they do the same thing that they did back then, they're going to get the same results over there. And so they don't do anything. They just stay stuck. They just stay there. And I'm here to tell you that when the day, you can reach your success, you can reach your destination that you want to be on spiritually or financially or relationally or in your business. You can reach it if you don't focus on your past or your future so much, but you focus on winning every single day. Amen. Okay? And that's what we're looking at this morning. You know, Danny started this off, this, this, this uh, series in the beginning of the year with a passage of scripture from Proverbs where it said, blessed is the one who listens to me watching at my door day by day, waiting beside my doorway. Fantastic passage of scripture. He goes on and talks about what he did. If you go back to the, to the deal, there's like 30,000 hits on TikTok from Danny. I'm like, he was bragging about it. I was like, man, that's awesome. I'm just kidding. I had like two and I'm just kidding. Um, Joel came back and, and he's talking about the second week, a day by day picture and seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that we're, we're thinking about or worried about or anxious about, he goes, hey, we're so focused on it. Don't focus on that. Seek me first and I'll take care of those things. So he gave us you know, some scripture and he gave us some things to do every single day. Then last week he talked about the price of success and basically that you and I have to get to a place where we're disciplining ourselves in certain areas in life so that we can reach our ultimate destination. Amen? Amen. So this morning, we're gonna take a look at a passage this morning uh, in um, Proverbs and just a couple of different passages that I have. But when 
the day, you know, people ask me, hey, do you have a word for the year? And I'm like, no, based upon last year, I don't need a word for the year. You know, I need a word every single day, Amen. right? And so uh, based on last year's lessons, I feel like if there's a word that we have as a church, it's the word daily, because we have to do something daily, right? Every day you and I make choices. And I don't know about this, but here's what I know about all of us. You and I win or lose by the paths that we choose, we win or lose by the paths and the direction that you are choosing today. In order to get from where you're at right now to where you wanna be, you need a daily path. You need to develop some good habits, right? If you keep on doing the same things that you're doing today, you're gonna keep getting the same things that you've been getting yesterday. Isn't that the truth? And so we have no one else to blame, but we have to look in the mirror and evaluate our lives, right? Regrets like divorce, bankruptcy, failed businesses, strained relationships, affairs, all these things, they don't come to us like a seizure. You don't wake up all of a sudden, it's like, oh, what are you doing in my bed? An affair, an adultery doesn't come on to you like a seizure. There is a path that you were on, a daily path that you were on that led you to that ultimate destination. Do you agree with me? They're a result of daily paths that we choose today. You and I have to focus on and look at and evaluate what are we doing day by day. Hey, by the way, do you like my hair? Yes. All right, good. I can't wait. I will not cut it until 2022, okay? Just to let you know. I, mean, I don't know if it's going to ever grow again or if it'll grow down to here, but we'll see what happens, all right? The daily path, it's a principle. It's not a rule that you follow, but it's rather something that's following you. This path this daily path, it's following you everywhere you go. It's not a law that you can break, but actually the daily path that you're on, it actually has the ability to break you. If you evaluate it, does that make sense? No one can create this path. It, you discover it. All of a sudden you discover that, you know what? This is going to lead me to this place. It's like the law of the farm. The law of the farm, we all know that. You reap what you sow. It just, it just, it's just an automatic principle. And the daily path is a principle also. You can't, you can't get away from it. And if you don't, you know, make adjustments on the daily path that you're on, it has the potential to, to, to make you successful or it has the potential to break you and to hurt people and hurt yourself in the long run. And here's what I know about every single one of us. When it comes to the daily path, if you're on the right one, if you're married, the daily path will keep you married or get you in trouble. If you have children, the daily path that you're on will empower your children for a greater success in their future or will harm them and hurt them will stunt their growth. If you're single, the daily path will maximize your potential for healthy relationships, or it can just have some destructive relationships in your life. The daily path is the key to avoiding regrets in your life. It's like the yellow brick road in the Wizard of Oz, right? If you want to get to a destination financially or spiritually, emotionally, or in any of these areas, you got to look at the daily path. We win or lose by the paths that we choose. For instance, let me give you a couple of examples. I wrote them yesterday. Because for instance, you're a single woman. How many guys single here? How many girls single here? One. Come on, ladies. All right. Single woman says, I want to meet and one day marry a great Christian guy who's really got his act together. Isn't that true? But she dates whoever asked her out, as long as he's cute. He's got a six pack, right? So you, you, you have a destination, you have a, a desire and a promise and something that you want to hold on to, but your daily path is going to give you different results. You're a single guy and you say, I want great sex life when I, once I'm married, but you're practicing with every girl that you date along the way. Don't shout me down now. Yes, I said that camera. You're a married woman. You say, I want to have a great relationship with my husband, but you're always making your children a priority over him or vice versa. The husband's saying, I want my kids to respect me as they grow up. And then they see you openly flirting with your neighbor constantly. Is this getting too much? You're a young Christian and you say, I want to develop a deep and lasting relationship with God. So you get up every single morning, get your cup of coffee and read the newspaper, go to social media. Come on, the destination that you're looking for is never going to get there because of the daily path that you're on. But you can switch that around, right? A man says, I want to grow old and I want to invest the latter years of my life into my grandchildren and to their children also. But you neglect taking care of your own health. You'll never reach that because of the daily path. Does that make sense? A couple says, we'd like our children to develop a personal relationship with God and choose friends who have done the same, but then you skip church every single Sunday, maybe come once a month because you're going to go to the lake. Come on. So the daily path 
is something that I learned when I was going to Maine and um, I went to go hike Cadillac Mountain. I don't know if you know where Cadillac Mountain is. It's the highest point there in Maine. It's 1,530 feet above sea level. It's really not that high, but it's the highest point along the North Atlantic seaboard. And it was the first place that you can view the sunrise in the United States from early October through around March or so. So whenever you climb up there, that's what you can see every single morning. There's another picture right there. And so I, I, went, I was up there uh, and I traveled with Joel on one of the summit leader trips. And um, it was a test be- for me because I had just gotten out of back surgery and I was climbing Machu Picchu and these other places that we've gone to, the Grand Canyon and stuff. And so after back surgery, I realized that I still had a nerve, a dead nerve that never got fixed. And so my right leg is very, very weak and it's, it still hasn't recovered. It's been like five or six years or so. so. But at that time, right after surgery, I had to like literally retrain my thinking on how to step with my right foot again. I would sometimes, I, I thought I'd bring it high enough, but I would trip over a step. And by the end of the day, you get so tired because you're just walking and doing the normal thing that your leg, you're just kind of dragging it. And so I had to take an, a moderate climb and I had to go over there and test this so that I can say yes to the other summit trips that Joel carries throughout the year. And uh, I didn't know if I could make it though. I was like, well, I can, this would be a great test for me. So it's not that hard and I just need to get up to the top, watch the sunrise and just rejoice. And so that morning I was a little nervous. Mentally, I was strong. Physically, I dropped like 40 pounds to get and prepare myself for that. And so I was ready to go, but I still wasn't quite sure because of what I was feeling on my leg. I couldn't feel. And uh, uh, something, it's just, you know, it's just, I just know when I put more strain on it, it gets weaker and weaker. And so what I didn't know also was the climb and some of the adversity that I would, I would have as I would climb up there. And so that morning when I woke up, I looked at my journal a couple of days ago, and I have this written on my journal. It was the morning of that climb to Cadillac Mountain. It was Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and it says, here's my promise uh, from the Lord for today's walk in Maine to Cadillac Mountain. Proverbs 4, 26, it says, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. And so the Lord spoke to me, he says, when you're going, watch your foot. Make sure that whenever you put your foot in somewhere, make sure it's established and it's on solid ground. And so I already had a leading from the Lord that usually I'm just climbing, I'm looking around and stuff like that, taking pictures. Well, I put my picture in my pocket, my picture of my phone in my pocket, and I just, just everywhere I went, this is the one trip that you don't see me going around, going crazy or going ahead or taking different roads. I'm sitting there just watching my feet because I wanted to make sure. And I got to this place and all of a sudden, I didn't realize that we were gonna be climbing things like this. There's pieces of iron sticking out of the, the rocks. And I'm like, oh man. And I was already just halfway through the climb and I had to just go one by one and I'd make sure I'd step on that thing and just lift everything that I could. This was already weak, I couldn't do it. And so I had to use other pieces of my body to lift myself up. If not, I would have hurt myself potentially badly or hurt someone else that was below me because I'm not a very light person, okay? So it would have been good for anyone. And here's what I'm saying about you and about us is that in your life, if you don't have a daily path that's established, that you have solid ground on, you have the potential to hurt other people and hurt yourself if you don't have a good solid daily path. And so the Lord was showing me how to ponder my path on a daily basis and to reflect and evaluate the things that I'm doing day by day. And if I do these things day by day, ultimately I'll reach the destination that I'm longing for, that he's put in my heart. And so this morning, I wanna do the same thing. I'm gonna give you four things that I want you to ponder on, four things to ponder on on your daily path. These are gifts that God's given every single one of us. The spirit of the Lord has given them to us. And uh, uh, what we do with those gifts is our gift to him. And so as you are, you know, we could give you 20 things to do or whatever, things like that. But I think these are solid. They're solid ground. They're on solid scripture. But these are four things that I want you to just evaluate and see if these elements are in your life every day. You might not gather all of them all in one day, but is this something that's consistent in your life? The first one is God's word. The word of God. It says, his word is a what? Lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You've gotta have God's word in your spirit so they can renew your mind because the word of God is is, 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 is the thing that God will use to divide those things that come from your soul or your flesh or the leading of the Lord. It says the word of God, it's it's living, it's alive. And it helps you on the path. If you're trying to get to a certain destination relationally, you know, I had, a, I had a, we went out witnessing one day and 
uh, Pastor Mark, who was one of our worship leaders, he came out and we, we met a guy on the apartment complex here in the lower income apartment complex there at the park by the park area. And this guy was really struggling. We met him and he was struggling. I said, what are you struggling about? He goes, man, I'm, I'm just struggling whether or not I should, I should ask this gal out and, and you know, maybe even marry her. And I'm like, so what's, what's the struggle? He goes, well, I'm, I'm thinking that if I do that, my wife might get mad at me. I'm like, wait a minute, what? I'm like, listen, in God's word, the answer's already there. Okay, most of the things that we're looking for, the answer's already in scripture. But sometimes we bypass that. We don't have the word of God in our daily path that we don't, we don't, we, you know, we just, we just kind of go off and we are the appetites of our flesh, the passions of our flesh are, is what's dictating us. We're fleshly ruled, carnally ruled. We need to be spirit ruled. We need to be word ruled, amen? And whenever you fill God's word into your heart and into your soul on a daily basis, it becomes the filter, and how you, you view life and your worldview and your perspective. And a lot of the times, the answers to the greatest challenges that you have have already been written in God's word. So in your daily path, evaluate your life. How much is God's word a part of your life? Is it just here on a Sunday or is it something that's done daily? Whenever you look at the Old Testament and you see the pattern that God's given us, when God delivered children out of, uh, the children of Israel out of Egypt, he said he gave them manna to eat every single day. And at the end of the day, you throw that away. No leftovers. You know, grandma, uh, tia Sadi or whatever was not gonna be there for the leftovers to bring home. Just throw those away. And every single day, I want you to get a new fresh, you know, manna. And so he's given us a picture of how God's word should be because his word is our daily bread, Amen. And so every single day, we need to be a part of partaking of God's word. The second thing in, um, that I want you to evaluate or ponder is coaching. Coaching, every single one of us have people in authority in our lives, people that we respect, our dads, our pastor, our coach, our teachers, people that we can go to that when they speak to us, we take heart, we listen, because they know, we know that they have our best interests at hand. Does that make sense? And so, so it's important for us to be teachable. It's important for us that on our daily path that we have people like that, that we can go to, people like that, that we can listen to, people like that, that we can have uh, gain some wisdom and instruction because either they've been there before or they have, some, they have some substance so that they can give to us regarding that area in our lives. There's a passage of scripture in Proverbs that says this in verse 17 in chapter 10, if you readily receive correction, you're walking on the path to life. But if you reject or re rebuke, you guaranteed to go astray. Your daily path should consist of people, whenever you don't know, you're at a crossroads. And it's, it's, you don't know, you don't really know what the God's word says about it. It's not clear. Well, you can go to one of your elders. You can go to your pastor. You can go to someone and receive the instruction. And they might not give you the answer that you want, but that's okay. That's the point, right? You want them to, you don't go to people that you just want them to side in with you. Well, so-and-so said it was okay, so I'm going to do that. You know, get two or three witnesses there. Is it confirmation there? Does that make sense? Yes. Everybody knows the people that are just yes people. Yeah. Hey, that sounds good to you. Go for it, man. You really think I should pursue her? Oh, yeah, she's great. <laughs> Proverbs 15 says, accepting constructive criticism opens your heart to the path of life, making you right at home among the wise. Isn't that great? Isn't that clear? The third thing, I'm going quick this morning. The third thing is, I don't know how to call it, but I'll just call it inward truth. Say inward truth. This is very, very important, okay? On your daily path, this is so important, Daniel. Just kidding. This is so important that you don't lie to yourself. You don't keep secrets in your own soul. It's important that you don't, if you just make a commitment on your daily path, that you are true to yourself, that you don't lie to yourself, that you walk in truth, you're gonna, you're gonna get to your destination. Make that a part of your life. So many of us live our lives with untruth and we hide things and we cover up things and then somebody's asking us about those things and we cover that up and we, it's just a cycle that we, we continually live on. Listen, break that cycle. Notice what it says in Proverbs 16. Before every person, there's a path that seems like the right one to take, but it leads us straight to hell. That's pretty clear, isn't it? All right, enough said. Let's close the doors. Life, listen to this. 
Life motivation, your life motivation, comes from the deep longings in the heart. And the passion to see them fulfilled urges you onward. I like to say it this way. Your life moves in the direction of your most predominant thought. What you dwell on, you're going to go in that direction. So you got to be honest with your life. We are flesh. We have a soul. We are spirit, right? We live in this body. It's fleshly. It has appetites. It has passions. A lot of those passions that God's given to us, they're actually holy, but we've perverted them. The world has perverted them. I tell my grandson, son, sex is great. God created it. But he also gave us boundaries on how we can have the most pleasing time. You know, if we just stay within those boundaries, it'll be well with you. If you get out of those boundaries, you're going to hell. No, I just don't tell that. I just tell him it won't be well with you. And so, so, you know, your life, so here's the thing is that you got to be honest with your own soul. You got to be honest with your own heart. What is the most dominant thought when you wake up in the morning, when you go to work? Is it that gal, your secretary? Or is it sexual things? Is it lustful things? Is it, you know, how can I get over this person so I can get to the top? Is it manipulating? You know, be honest with yourself. Truth, your daily path has to consist of truth. Am I teaching you okay? I know it's pastoral admonition, but listen, I'm the pastor, so I got to do this. But if you, if you and I learn how to live this way, guess what? It's going to be well with us. Like I said, if you feed your spiritual purposes, you get to starve your fleshly passions and appetites. And all of a sudden, the daily, the daily thoughts, those things that are uh, most predominant are going to be things that are godly, things that are holy, things that are honorable, things that are, you know, just pure, things that are worthy of, of praise. Amen? Amen. And so I'm, there's no condemnation here, but I'm just saying in every one of these areas, if you find yourself like, oh, this is it, the doc's here and he's poking at that area. It's like, dang, I want to get out of here. Let's go. It's 951. <clears throat> Evaluate those and just make the adjustment. Tell the truth. Do not lie, right? Your life moves in the direction of your most predominant thought. And the last one is this. What's the first one? God's word. The second one? Coaching. The third one? The fourth one is eternity. And what I mean by that is this. The path to promotion. How many guys want to be promoted? All of y'all. The rest of y'all, y'all don't. The path to promotion and prominence comes by having a heart of a bond slave who serves everyone. You agree? (laughs) Think about this. We've heard this scripture before, but I want you to see the connection here. I'm talking about eternity. How does that even link? The path to promotion and prominence comes from having a heart of a bond slave who serves everyone. The son of man didn't even come expecting to be served by everyone, but to serve everyone and to give his life as a ransom price. Why? Why did he do that? in exchange for the salvation of many. You know why he served people? You know why we serve people? You know why this church even exists? It's because eternity is in our hearts. We're connected to eternal things. He came to serve those that didn't deserve to be served. He came to give to us when we didn't deserve to be given anything. And so mercy came. He came because he was concerned about our eternity. He wanted to know that we wanted to spend, he wants to spend eternity with every single one of us. Ecclesiastes says this, he made everything beautiful. He's also set eternity in the hearts of men. Every single person you connect with on a daily basis, whether it's at home, your neighbor, your work, wherever you're at, there's eternity in their heart. In other words, they'll never be satisfied. They're looking for satisfaction. They're looking for something that just makes them feel like this is, this is the reason why I'm here. They'll never find it until they find Christ until they find Jesus, until they go by the path of the cross and they bow their needs to the master, the one that you've already bowed your knee to. And all of a sudden, for those of us who've experienced eternity in our hearts, there's nothing like it. It's the most purest thing that we have here on this earth. And I want every single person that I see driving by or going into the stores or watching a you know, sack and pack or putting fuel in their car, I'm like, I wonder if they have eternity in their heart. And so my opportunity every single day is how can I serve people so that I can at least connect them to the one who loves them more than I could ever love them? And I just want to say this to you guys, Crossroads Church. I applaud you, I'll brag on you, and I'll keep bragging on you. You guys are this way. You serve 
over and over and over again. You served us, you served people. We've had two memorial services this week and a wedding. One memorial service, we don't even know who the family is. We just heard that they called us up and they were looking for a church to have a service. And when they would call different places, they were charging them all kinds of money. And they asked me, well, do you, can they do it here? I was like, absolutely, they can do it here. Because, well, I don't know who they are. It doesn't matter who they are. That's why we're here. Every person is created in God's image and deserves a, a dignity and honor in their home going. And so the family came and man, they were ministered to. We loved on them. We just, you know, and, and they probably weren't followers of Christ. I don't know. I, I'm not the judge, right? But we served them because of the salvation that was the potential to take place in that moment, in that hour. There was a biker who called. This biker was looking for a place. The biker's wife was looking for a place to bury the, her husband. They didn't have a place because at the places that they were going to, they could only fit 10. And they said, can we use your lot out here? It's like, absolutely, you can use our lot. You can put a thousand people. It doesn't matter to me. You can use our facility. So they came in and just so happened that it began to pour down rain when the service was gonna start. So they all moved in here and we had a service for every single one of them. And we loved on them. We poured our love to them. Why? Because eternity was at stake. Isn't that why we're here, Crossroads Church? We're here because of that. And I just want you to know, that during the pandemic, during all this stuff last year and even now in 2021, you guys understand about eternity. You realize that this church is a hospital. You realize that we're here to serve our community and serve the surrounding area. You still give, you still serve, you still come and serve you know, on the team and worship team. Why do we serve in children's church? Why do we serve in the youth ministry? Why do we serve on the worship team or the media back there? It's not to push buttons. It's because lives are at stake. The eternity is at stake. When you connect your life to something eternal, Man, I'm telling you, your daily path, you'll get to your ultimate destination. God will see to it. Proverbs 4 chapter says this, the path of the righteous is like the shining sun. It shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day. The shine, I don't know about you, but since I've been born and I'm 55 years old, the sun has come up every single day. God's given us a picture, a clue. Your path is about daily choices. Every single day, it should get stronger, it should get better, It'd be more encouraging, help others, coach others, encourage others, love on others, amen? You might have great intention, but it's the direction that you're on that will ultimately lead you to your destination. Are there discrepancies between your, your desires and your dreams and your heart and what you're doing on a daily basis? If there is, it's time to make the adjustments, amen? Now, I'm gonna just leave you this, uh, take home. I want you to just take a picture of that right there. And this is something you can take home. I mean, I don't have time to teach this. This is another lesson, but this is something that's really, really awesome. Because I found out in this passage that there are some things that can um, disrupt your daily path. There are two things that you've got to look at in your life as you ponder this week and see if these things will trip you up on your daily path. Notice right here that we have a cloud of witnesses. In Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it says, as for us, we all, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like a cloud, right? It says, we have these great cloud of witnesses. So we have to, they're, they're cheering us on. These are people that have gone before us. They're encouraging our spiritual walk and they're saying, man, go for it. Yes, do that. Press in, love Jesus, serve others. And it says, we have these great cloud of witnesses. So it says, that we have to let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin that, easily fall, that we easily fall into. Those two things are the things that will trip us up. And he says, take care of those things. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the past has already been marked out before us. Amen. So this week, here's your great, great uh, evaluation of things to ponder. This week, number one, there you go. What wounds have pierced you? And what sin do you fall easily into? Great thing. You don't have to take a whole long time to do it, but write that down in your journal and then figure out how are you going to redirect that path so that you can get a daily path that's honoring to God. Amen? You and I win or lose by the paths we choose. We got to win the day. Forget about yesterday. Don't focus so much about tomorrow. Let's win today. Amen? If you are ever in the Seguin area, 
come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.